Well, it's getting cold in Canada today. It's October uh, 28th or something, and it's going to snow today for the first time over here in London, Ontario. So I've got a couple big oil heaters to fix. So these work uh, just about the same as your oil furnace in your home, at least if you have a modern oil furnace. Now these work by burning kerosene, heating oil, or diesel. Diesels are awful smelly. You wouldn't really want that in your house. The other oils aren't too bad. They've got a combustion chamber in that big tube and a heat exchanger and a powerful fan motor to blow air through there. Something like the way your furnace works. Pretty much exactly the same, but just a different shape. And hot air blows out that end so you can heat up a shop or an apartment building or something you're working on in building or a giant tent. The exhaust goes out the top, of course. So at the back end of the unit, just like your oil furnace at the bottom, you've got a quarter horsepower electric AC motor. Then in the center of the unit, you've got that rectangular box there, and that's your high voltage supply. It's a transformer. It makes anywhere from 10 to 15,000 volts to ignite the fuel. A fuel filter, of course. This one happens to be disconnected. And a little hydraulic pump that's supposed to be connected there. And that works just like the power steering pump in your car. It pressurizes the oil fairly high and sends it to the injector. Well, that's the injector. Looks something like a car injector. It's got an itty bitty tiny hole, a feed line feeding it pressurized heating oil, and it comes out in a cone shaped mist like that. When these injectors get dirty, there's a little screen behind there, and the screen collects dirt, where little tiny chunks of dirt or carbon build up there, and their little cone shape doesn't quite come out as a cone, it comes out in a funny spray pattern, which then can cause liquid fuel to end up in your combustion chamber and leak into the basement and possibly catch fire or burn really inefficiently. That part there is actually pointing around backwards. It's supposed to be pointing inside the combustion chamber, like the one on this. These two white bars are ceramic insulators, like on a spark plug. These are your two electrodes. The high voltage spark jumps between to keep the flame always going and just two high tension spark plug wires going to it. And this is the other side of your high voltage transformer. Here we have a safety thermostat in case for some reason the exhaust is blocked or the fire backwashes and comes into the combustion box. And so it doesn't catch everything on fire and destroy it. This thermostat shuts the unit down if it gets hot. And we have a photovoltaic cell and this cell senses light. And I'll explain how that works in a moment. On the business end of the unit where all the power comes in, you've got your little brain box, and that's a reset button. The signal from your photovoltaic cell comes here, and the signal from that heat sensitive switch comes here, the thermostat, the safety thermostat. So when you first turn this thing on to fire it up, obviously there's no light in the firebox, so that sensor senses darkness. So that little brain box has to first sense that it's dark in the combustion chamber because of course that's what it is before you start it up. If it doesn't sense darkness first, then it knows the door is open and it's sensing light from outside so it won't allow it to fire up because you could get a blast of fire in your face and that would be, you know, not cool. So, if I want to fire this thing up, I turn it on. Nothing will happen, of course, because it's sensing light. Then I put my finger on it, give it the dark signal so it thinks the door is closed. Then as soon as I remove my finger, then it gets the light signal and thinks it's time to ignite it, and then it'll start working. And the light it gets when I remove my finger, if it was actually in the box, is the, is the light that comes from that little spark. So for demonstration purposes, the fiery injector is pointing out the wrong way from this unit, and I've got a heat deflector on there so that the heat won't melt my photo sensor. So let's go do it. Power on. Air blower fan that blows the heat is on. Nothing happening here. Got to give it the dark signal. There you go. 
Now you know what your oil burning furnace looks like inside. This flame actually spins around inside the heat exchanger in a swirl chamber to dissipate more heat so it makes it more efficient. Mmm, cool. Now if I block that sensor and make it dark, this will shut down because who knows, the spark could have quit working and you don't want to fill your furnace up or this chamber up with unburnt fuel. Because then the next time you light it, you could have a huge fire. So cold air goes in, gets heated, and that's how it works. Cool.